Welcome to the latest edition of the Irish Rally Podcast. This episode is brought to you in association with J&J Services, main agents for Hobby Weld Welding Gas, the rent-free gas bottle. Today we delve into a host of different things, none of which involves much action on our roads this year, unfortunately. And again, since we last spoke to you on the podcast, we have more bad news that uh, we kind of knew it already, I suppose, but the Killarney Historic Rally is now a goner, which means we have a full write-off of fixtures for the remainder of 2020. My guest this week to talk about um, a host of different topics is uh, Eilish Dunn. Eilish, uh, great to have you on the podcast. We spoke many times previously, but um, uh, none since we started this. And it's great to have you on and great to be having a chat with you. Thanks very much, Kevin. And thanks for having me on. And well done on how the podcast is going for you so far. Thanks, Emil. Um, I suppose let's let's go into kind of stuff that's not rally orientated initially. So I, I believe you're a frontline worker. I'm a frontline worker, yeah, right in the tick of it all, Kevin. It's hard I will go, but I think it makes everyone realise what's more important to them when you are working the centre of things, scary stuff out there. <laughs> yeah, so tell us but exactly is... kind of what, what you've been doing over the, you know, what, what you actually do as a day job and what you're kind of encountering on a day-to-day basis. Um, well, I'm a medical secretary in a very busy GP surgery in Kilkenny. And needless to say, phones are hopping, COVID queries. People unfortunately can't come in to see us. But we're trying our best to keep everyone safe and advise them as best we can and yeah. keep ourselves safe as well, which is more important than not to bring out in home to anyone. Yeah, that's uh, that's difficult, no doubt. And um Jeannie Mac, like, I mean, you all had to keep going. We had Killian Duffy on, um, you know, a number of months ago now when he was telling us about his partner working in the hospital as well and stuff. And I suppose there's a great debt of gratitude from all of us towards, like, he as well that's, that's doing that for us because while most people can stay safe, um, you're kind of putting yourselves in a, a dangerous position. But, um, yeah, it's been testing, no doubt, the last couple of months. Oh, it is mentally and physically on everyone, which I know we get through with it people are good and people are kind so all we can do is stay trucking on and hopefully 2021 will bring new things for us all yeah and just in terms of that like are we is it just the case are we ever going to like not be in a position where we're having this on around us until we get to a stage where we finally do get a vaccine do you think it's just a matter of people just protecting themselves wear your mask um i don't agree with Pfizer's, but that's just not me it's everyone onto their own but it's hard to know you know people can't get careless yeah you just so have to do your own bit for, exactly so let's bring it back to the one thing i suppose that you could have done with this year and that was a bit of rallying because it's the thing that you used to let off a bit of steam um oh, yeah. like it, it must have been crazy for you and obviously for the thousands of people around the world that are, are into their sport and they've had this kind of taken away. Um, you know, it's one of the most difficult aspects of COVID where your hobbies are, are swept from under your feet and you have to kind of find alternative ways to to try and let off a bit of steam. But it must have been difficult for you, I suppose, as well. It was, Kevin. Which, you know, like our last rally, well, the only rally we'd done this year was Carrick Forest in February. And we went down to Marshall then in March for the Limerick Forest and... Unfortunately, the, the snow gods took that away from us as well this year. But I know, I think when you're working and you're in the ticket things, just the realisation kicks in. Like you do miss your rally. And you miss meeting your buddies. You miss meeting your friends. But realisation is keeping everyone safe. You're not going to risk that. And unfortunately, in a car, you're less than two metres away from everyone. And so you can't be greedy or selfish either. You have to respect everyone as well. Obviously now we're in, we're in full lockdown, but when we were a few levels back, were you kind of still in favour of hoping to see something happening or what were you, were you at that particular point? To be honest, Kevin, I wasn't because with work being so busy and I suppose anyone that's in the front line, I don't know if they were thinking the same as I was, but it was the last thing that was on your mind. You weren't going to put yourself at risk. You weren't going to put others at risk, especially coming from work, you know, going places. You just... I had resorted to the fact that my rallying was over for 2020, unfortunately, and we hated saying it, but, you know, I wasn't going to risk anyone, especially Pierce, you know, Craig, you know, I wasn't being selfish and then coming home as well. So 
I suppose I will look forward to 2021. Hopefully brighter things might come for us all. Yeah, well, look, in terms of what you mentioned at the start, the Carrick Forestry Rally seems like an absolute lifetime ago. It doesn't even seem like it was in 2020. No, it doesn't. It feels like it was last year or two years ago even. You know, and in fairness now, I know James was trying to run the Ravens Rock this year and in fairness to him, he had a great lot of work done and everything done for it. But unfortunately, things changed again. And the same at Wexford. Unfortunately, Wexford lost theirs as well after doing all their work as well. Yeah, and I suppose, like, we were so close to seeing the, the rock going ahead there. And in one sense, yes, it was absolutely the right decision. Um, You can't, you know, put people at risk or whatever. But at the same time, if it had gone ahead, it would have been a nice little blueprint going forward into next year if that was going to be how we had to run our events. And it probably is how we're going to have to run our events, just to see how it would have unfolded and, you know, the, the trials and tribulations of it, the, the pros and cons, and just to see if it could be a runner going into a more medium to long-term situation? Oh, definitely, without a doubt. It would have been fantastic to see either of them run, you know, and it was unfortunate just the week that it was due to run that the plug got pulled. But, you know, I suppose everyone has to do their bit now and protect everyone. And, you know, big changes are ahead, unfortunately, in rally. And rally offices, I'd say, won't be the same as what we... You, they all was war, but will it just? Yeah, that's it. Like, and I suppose we give Gary Bradley a bit of credit too because Wexford was almost a runner as well um, on a couple of occasions, and I know they worked very hard. And lads down in the Clarney Motor Club as well, just to, to give them a bit of credit in regards to trying to get that event going. Um, there was no stone left on horn, and fair play to everyone who tried to improvise and and make things happen in a very very difficult and testing situation. Um, the, yeah, the event below in Limerick, like that was that was a funny one. Again, it doesn't seem like it was this year, but the snow coming down, it was it was outrageous really at the time. Oh, it was unnatural, it was unbelievable. It's hard to believe for three years in a row that that snow just descended on the stages. But it was actually gas that morning driving down to Limerick. There wasn't a, a, a blade of snow anywhere to be seen. Even driving out to the first stage where we were marshalling. It was only when we started getting closer and closer up and next minute this shower of snow came. No snow in Park Firma. Two minutes flat, I'd say, the whole place was covered. It was unbelievable. Yeah, uh, this year has just been unbelievable because we had the snow down <laughs> Limerick. We had storms at the start of the year. Then, then COVID comes along and it's just, it's just mental. But um, <laughs> I, like, let's take it back a little cog then. I'm going to ask maybe how you became interested in rallying, I suppose, and where that, where that all came from. I was always into cars, to be honest, Kevin. I was always a, a tomboy, as anyone that knows me growing up. If there was a, a car going to the moon this minute, I'd have been in it going just to look at cars. And when we were small, the Circuit of Ireland actually ran through Coon, which was fantastic. I remember standing on Granny's Pier, over the road. No way would I get down until the Pink Panther passed the road. <laughs> and sure, Carlos stages ran through Coon then as well. So, you know, that really got me going, I think, into the cars as well, into the rallying. Yeah, and who was the, the, the big dogs coming through that time that you were kind of really looking forward to, to seeing? Oh, she'd have having Bertie Fisher, sure, the McCrae's, my idol, you know, Cullens. Oh, it was, it was just great, like... Yeah. fantastic and that's what got the that's what got the juices flowing then you were, you were thinking Jesus, this, is, this yeah. is amazing and you, you kind of started going to it then on a more long term basis did you? did yeah heading off uh, looking at it and then sure we started into the marshal and that's where it all started and being around service and stuff and sure then in 2012 then Pierce brought me for a spin the rally sprint down in Clombell down the race course and sure that was it. He couldn't get me out of the car after that. <laughs> and where did you get? He was stuck kinda, with me. Where did you get to meet Pierce Donny? Kind of before all this happened. Where did you get introduced? Um, we'd have met in service, and the lads were servicing Pierce's car, and sure, I was promoted in. I was the Mrs. Dial of the tea making. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the hall transpired. So we've yeah. been back in 2012. He's going from making a cup of tea to actually going in and navigating. Now is a nice is a nice bit of a jump, but that's kind yeah. of a. A rags to riches story as well, because I often hear in media in particular where, you know, people are, are working as runners, we'll say, for, for RTE and they're making tea and sandwiches and getting guests ready. And 
now they're actually presenters. So I think Ivani Quillen is a pretty good example. But there you go. Like it's if you if you go in and just be involved and and become interested and get around, then who knows what might happen? And there's you now navigating. Like that's exactly it, Kevin. Yeah, you know the sprint was unbelievable. I couldn't wipe the smile off my face. You know, and it was a handy run. And then I remember after Pierce winning the Southeast Championship in 2013, I remember him saying to me, "Would you like to do a rally?" And I said, ah, "Sure, we'll give it a go." And I remember I never had a book of notes in my hand in my life, Kevin. <laughs> I hadn't the clue what a road book was. Knew nothing about it. So he brought me out a few evenings, handed me a book of notes. He said, call them. I remember looking at it and I said, geez, what are these? <laughs> we be going along and I'd be calling them. I was saying to Pierce, what's that? <laughs> so it kind of took off from there then, really, so it did. Yeah, well, he was obviously very kind of patient with you and accommodating because these things take a good bit of getting used to. And like, did it take you long to kind of get up to speed with what you had to be doing then? Um, to be honest, the first even, you know, once I got over the first even, I kind of took to it like a duck to water. I never looked back, but I think I had the security then of Pierce there being telling me what to do. And I got great advice as well, you know. Everyone is there to help you and everyone is great to see you getting going and, you know, it was great. And sure, our first tarmac rally then was Carlo in 2014. So it was, that was unbelievable. That was amazing. And it was so local then as well, which I think made it even more special. Yeah, definitely. Like, And just in terms of, I suppose, let's delve into kind of women in motorsport as well, because we are in the year where... 2020 initiative is very much at the forefront and what that obviously stands for is that they had three uh, stated targets by the end of 2020 that was 20% more media coverage of women in sport 20% more female participation and 20% more attendance now obviously that's not going to work because we the lockdown did away with the attendance side of it but um, it was about creating a culture shift in the perception of girls and women in sport so like um, when you go back through the history of women involved in motorsport we have some of the the greatest names of, of all time like i mean rory uh, rosemary smith i should say um is, is one of the standouts and then on a global front you have your michelle moutons your louise aiken walkers and stuff but like they were kind of few and far between do you think right now there is a kind of a greater participation or do you still kind of feel like you're fighting a losing battle to a certain extent and that you would like to see a lot more women involved or how do you kind of see that aspect of it Oh no, it's it's amazing now the amount of women that are rallying, navigating, participating, carting, everything now is just fantastic. Even since I started in 2014, like it really has come on in Leams and Mount, there's way more women involved in it, so there is. But even the coverage, like you see your Irish Women in Motorsports page that Hannah Power has set up there on Facebook is fantastic. And even during the week, sure, the Kerry Motor Club, they launched their Women's 2020 as well, with Elaine Hay and stuff, which is fantastic. It's great to see it going. Yeah, and, um, you know, like, in terms of, we'll say, what can be done, what actually can be done to create further participation? Is it just giving it more media coverage in general or is there a kind of a greater plan at play that, that can kind of encourage more female involvement in, in rallying in particular? I suppose it's hard for everyone to start, you know, like the way I was lucky, I got the break and got going, but you know, everyone needs a start it. It's just for someone to get out, get their break and get going. You know, the lads are fantastic. You're never stuck for anything. So women need never be afraid to get involved because there is always someone there to help. Um, there is great coverage now at the moment, you know, promoting women and to see all the little young ones coming up there now as well. Like the forest is fantastic, the J1000s. Like there's, to see the, the young girls coming up there now at 15, you know, it's it's brilliant. There are future stars to watch now. And in terms of like, let's, let's mention those female competitors involved. I know you a long time and I know there's a, a sprinkling down around the country as well. But just to, to name drop those current competitors that we have to give them that bit of recognition here as well on this week's episode. Uh, sure, you have Gemma Curley, you have Eleni Hay, Anne Hutchison does her navigating, Ashling Power, and not forgetting anyone that's out, Marston as well. You know, you have Alma Clear there behind our, our clocks there every weekend and even the women involved, you know, behind the scenes, rally offices, secretaries, club members, 
everyone. You know, it's just fantastic. I don't want to stay mentioning people in case they forget anyone either. Yeah, uh, but Mary you does know, the radio. The rally radio is unbelievable. Oh, Mary is well. brilliant. Yeah, she's great. She's you know, just so honest. Can is there? Oh, she's fantastic. You know, Bill and Mary are great now. Yeah, I don't know how that, like, that's a very, very hard job to do, like, and, and she gets it right more often than not, and fair play to her, it's great, like, she's just, as I said, she's just on it the whole time, Mary, on the radio. Oh, definitely, yeah, without a doubt, and it's hard going, you know, every weekend, you know, especially the few weekends, I know that you would have a few rallies, weekends in a row, you could be in Kerry, Watford, Carlo, you know, you could be anywhere. Yeah, Charlotte Egan is another one we should probably mention with, uh, oh, you know, um, she sat in with Colin O'Toole there uh, on a couple of occasions and loves her, loves her motorsport. Uh, Sarah McFadden, another big standout. Um, Sarah, yes, yeah, Sarah really came into the limelight, fair play to her, great achievement. Yeah. Oh, and, a big first for Zara. Yeah. And, and her sister now sure is out, Vanessa as well, starting off. Yeah, Emma Marie Knott is another one that sticks out. Uh, we, we have loads, in fairness now, we have probably um, more than a lot of countries, I would say, in terms of female participation. So we're, we're actually going fairly well at the moment. And uh, look, if this particular episode leads to a few more getting involved, then I, I'd be Hopefully. I'd help out, you know. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the big thing with the 2020 initiative and in terms of the coverage and stuff like that. But just another little one while I'm on the topic of it, um, we mentioned Killian Duffy earlier in the episode. Killian's running a kind of uh, a workshop for, for co-drivers, for both new co-drivers and existing co-drivers and details are available there uh, on the on the personal page and in with Killian as well on, on social media if you want to check it out. That looks like a really interesting mileage because there's, you know, you mentioned there earlier you didn't really know what a road book was. Um, and you had to learn the basic fundamentals with peers going back all, all that time. So that's a really good idea from Killian there to, to try and get people involved and give them a bit of insight into what the job actually entails. Like, Oh, definitely, Kevin. Yeah, without a doubt. And I would advise people that are thinking of getting into it to actually go do it. We actually went over to Port Leash, was it two years ago, I think, the last one he ran? Um, just as a refresher course, you know, to get tips ourselves even though you would be out every weekend, there's always a little thing that you wouldn't realize or you'd forget or, you know, or even just to know more. And it was actually brilliant. So it was, you know, you would get great tips out of it. In yeah. fairness to him, fair play to you. Killian, you know, it is a great opportunity for, for people to do it. And it and, is very interesting. And he's had to improvise a bit this year as well, because of course he would have had the notes done up for the rock and, and all that and would have took a big hit. So it's good. He has that kind of... Um, intuitive innovative brain anyway that he'll, he'll take the, the the initiative and more power to him we really enjoyed the episode when he was on with us here as well and and hopefully that particular thing over the next few weeks goes well for him i'm sure there'll be a lot of people interested in, in taking that up um yeah hopefully anyway we do wish him the best of luck with him but it was very good now the evening that we did do it in port leash it was i did enjoy it and you do get great tips out of it you think you know everything but you don't <laughs> yeah there's always uh every day is a school day says you Exactly, now you said it. Yeah. Now, uh, another thing I just want to mention on the podcast is uh, Rally Insight. Of course, we had Adam Hall on as well previously from Rally Insight, and they're releasing another book there coming out over Christmas. So we'll give that a mention as well. Uh, you can check it out on the Rally Insight uh, social media pages and the website and stuff like that as well, uh, which again should make for very good reading. There's lots of big hitters there among the people who have contributed to it, so worth checking out. Um, Eilish, I want to take it back then to... I suppose the best year that you've had in, in motorsport and that's 2018. You won the Southeast title with Pierce. Uh, talk us through that year and how much it meant. Ah, oh, it was unbelievable. It was, you know, a little did I know in 2014 when I sat in the car in Carlo that in 2018 we'd be Southeast stages rally champions. It was unbelievable. So it was a tough year, but it was great. It was unbelievable now. It was meant everything to us. And the year itself, um, in terms of the events, I suppose, that you kind of, uh, you know, that led to you winning the championship is, is probably the best way of putting it. Can, can you kind of vividly remember those events and what led to you winning the whole thing out? Um, yeah, 2018, it started off bad, unfortunately, for us. Um, Carrick Forest was our first rally. Unfortunately, we didn't get out park for Ma. Our gearbox decided to she had a little aisle on us, so that was our first round. So we actually went up and marshalled then for the rest of the day for that. And sure, then we came back then, 
our next rally then after that was Ballyvorney, Jim Walsh down in Ballyvorney, which was a great day. Then we done sure what had we after that? Carrick on shore the Ravens Rock, Carlos Stages Rally. Um I'm probably going to forget some now. Limerick Forest. Um what else did we do Wexford, two days in Wexford, two days in the Cork twenty. Um I'm probably forget some of the sprints as well that year. Yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of a lot of money and time. We done eighteen days rallying that year. So we did. And won yeah. the southeast. It was it was unbelievable. Was that a clear stated was it a clear stated aim at the start of the year that this is what you were going gung ho for? Or did it kind of materialise or what way was it? It kind of really only materialised after we start when the tables turned, things start to go on at the right way for us. No matter what we turned our hand to went right for us, everything just fell into place. And I think our our, our biggest day would have been after the two days of Wexford was to finish that. And then was to get a clear run home then for the Cork 20. But Wexford was unbelievable. Just across the finish line and carrying one piece and the two of us in one piece. And the crack was unbelievable. But just to focus then on the Cork 20, was, it was hard going because we done three two-day rallies in the space of seven weeks. We were after doing two days in Cork Forest. And... Um, the um the axle broke on us actually I remember the Sunday there was the parts gods just descended on on um service that day. There was parts left everywhere for us and everyone was willing to help us just to keep us going, just to get a finish that day. It was unbelievable. It was, that's the best of the rally and the rally family. Everyone is there to help. There's no one there to begrudge you at and there's always someone there for you. And then sure, Cork 20 then, that was special. That was the icing on the cake. But that didn't come easy to us either. Remember the Saturday we went out, we nearly lost her on one of the stages. But we kept her going anyway and got a finish. Then out, all we had to do then was finish on the Sunday. And I remember the last few yards of the last stage, it was like someone just hit a butte button. I couldn't speak, <laughs> nothing had come out. No notes, no nothing. But... Once we crossed the finish line, I think the realisation then just hit us that we were after doing it. It was unbelievable. And massive celebrations then, no doubt. Oh, sure, it was great. And we actually, that was the Sunday, the Cork 20 was our 50th seat together in, in that few years we were together, Seth and Pierce. Wow, and so what a time just, for to, to mark that as well, like a 50 yeah, odd, just, event after winning the title, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was, you know, it was fair going in four years, really, so it was brilliant. Well, going back to a time where you didn't know what the, the road book was or you didn't know what the <laughs> notes were, to, to make that sort of a transition in, what, four or five years was pretty spectacular. So, um, geez, yeah, that's something to be very proud of, like. Ah, it was great. No, yeah, we've had great memories and great crack and made the best of friends and met the best of people. And no matter what county you go to, you know, there's always someone there that you can, that's, that's your friend, like, you know, you never want for anything. It's brilliant. And you did a good few events last year as well. I'm um, just checking you up here on the, the EWRC results. And uh, one of those was the demonstration drive below with the Rally of the Lakes. And Michael Fassbender was obviously down there. There's a lovely photo of you and him and a couple of others in that as well. Um, like, that uh, Peugeot 205 rear wheel drive was a, a fairly... A uh, special uh, piece of machinery as well, if uh, if memory serves me correct. But uh, you got you got a good few events um, on board last year, and you know you did the car twenty again. Um, so yeah, Jesus, if you could have spared out a few of them into twenty twenty and and did half of them, you would have been you would have been fairly happy. But yeah, it's, yeah, been, it's been it's been kind to you, but like I mean, this requires a lot of money to stay going as well, and a lot of a lot of time, and uh, as you kind of said, multiple multiple times. But look. I suppose in your case and in everyone's case, it's all worth it when I suppose when you jump in and you get that adrenaline rush. Oh, definitely, without a doubt. Yeah, last year, God, I think we done 15 or 16 days rallying last year. And Killarney, you know, you have to say, it was brilliant. Um, I done that with Brendan Brosnan in the Peugeot. And that was spectacular. It was fair machine, you know, which was brilliant. And Michael Fassbender, an absolute gentleman, so he was. You know, everyone 
was the same to him as he was to us, you know, there was no airs or graces about him and even, you know, even in service, anyone could approach him, it was brilliant, so it was. You know, remember, it was great. Do you know, do you know that he put, brought a three-part video, I think, based on, on that event? Was that this year or last year he brought out the video? I know the event didn't run this year, but when did that video get released? Because that doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but it seems like ages um, ago. The end time. So, this year. Yeah, he it's left a long time to bring it out. He did, yeah. He did, yeah. He brought it out this year. It was actually very good, the three parts of it. It was brilliant now to see it. It was a great documentary now, in fairness to him. Yeah, it was good coverage as well for the event itself and for... That was great, yeah. And she was a great old day. Sure, Noelle Horn was out with her dad, Pat, that day as well. You know, it was brilliant. It's yeah. fantastic. So if I was to ask you then, what's your what's your favourite event? Um, I don't know if you've done Donegal before, but what's would you like to do Donegal, number one, and number two, What what is your favourite event currently? Um, gosh, Donegal is probably on the book at least at some stage, Kevin. Um, current event, I love Cork Forest. I love the forestry. I'd stay in it all day. Um, like every rally has a particular stage that you will love. You know, Healy's Pass is just amazing. I love it. It's my favourite. Now, I know everyone has their favourites, but, and even the Coast Road stage that was ran in 2018 for the Ravens Rock, that was just spectacular as well. It was just so different. But, I don't know, it's hard to say. I love the forest now, I have to say. And there is certain tarmac ones that you do love doing. You know, Cork 20, I think, will always be special to me after winning the South East in 2018. But... Hopefully Donegal is on the bucket list at some stage down the road for us. Now, the dream car and the dream person to navigate for? Oh, Jesus. I better not say a person anywhere. I'll be shot. <laughs> I'll be fired. <laughs> uh, Pierce, um, may, Pierce wouldn't be good to spin with, with uh, one of those world stars for, for one day or, or whoever, whoever no, it is. He would, he, no, that's for sure. He definitely wouldn't. Um, I'd love to do a rally in a Porsche 911. That's what I'd love to do. Right. Or a Manta. Yeah, one or the other. That's what I'd love to. Just and the difference. Would you like to drive said Manta or would you like to just navigate with <laughs> someone that's driving it? Uh, if I won the lot, I know maybe drive Kevin, but I don't know that I get too far now behind the wheel. But I know I'll think, I'll think I'll stick to my comfort zone what I know. And stay in the passenger seat. Is there any sort of um, a grow to actually go and, and drive or are you happy enough navigating? I'm happy enough navigating. I suppose I know no different. You know, you have the expense of it then if you're in behind the wheel. So, you know, that's the other side of it too. But we won't write it off yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, did, you, did you say growing up then, uh, James Cullen was, was one of the heroes with Ellen Morgan on board. Is that is that kind of the, the pair that you kind of looked up to the most? Oh, I loved him, yeah. He was brilliant. And I remember actually when he done... Um, Port Leash was it there a few years ago we were doing road clothes so I actually got him to sign the programme so I actually have that there somewhere it was me Pink Panther the Gemini car yeah I think it was a girly colour when I was small <laughs> yeah and uh, geez, he won Donegal in that as well all those years ago and oh fantastic a, yeah an iconic piece of machinery mm-hmm. in fairness like and yeah then I suppose uh, like the late great Ellen Morgan was like one of the best we've ever ever had. Like, and that was probably the perfect duo for you to be looking up to. The pink car, uh, a great driver, <laughs> and an outstanding female co-driver as well. That was it, exactly. Yeah, and not to forget Bertie Fisher. Bertie Fisher was my idol as well. I loved Bertie Fisher. He was fantastic. Yeah, and do you know what I find? Like, yeah. the more stories you hear about Bertie, um, the the greater you like him because, uh, like, even having Steve Murphy on here and hearing the. The dealings he had with him in terms of buying the car off him and how, how sound he was. He just seemed to be so sound and so obliging and running that event, the Summit Rally all those years ago as well, when there was no, you know, a couple of events had, had gone by the wayside and he ran the Summit, which I think we mentioned in the last episode, but little things like that. He just had a fantastic way and such a such a, such a big loss, um, you know, but a, a legend, an absolute legend. It's still great to look back on all those old videos and on YouTube and stuff to, to see some of those great rivalries that Bertie had with, with Austin and um, you know, and going back with Billy Coleman and stuff uh, just fantastic times Oh definitely yeah without a doubt you know Jimmy McRae as well look Jimmy he's still going you know it's 
was brilliant as well. Even to see him doing Killarney and stuff was just amazing. But uh, Bertie was fantastic. And you never actually get tired of looking at any of the videos either. And his book was just fantastic. It's yeah. great. And uh, Jimmy, Jimmy McRae did, uh, he's had been doing Donegal as well in the Vauxhall Forenza. And, you know, he still, he has such a huge affection for the Irish stages still. You know what I mean? It's, it's unbelievable the love he has for, like, Oh, definitely, yeah. You know, he's a gentleman as well. So he's, I know, it's great to see them still around and doing it. And, you know, it's fantastic. And hopefully Gorham Park now next year will have someone down. Should we have Billy Coleman down? Was it two years ago? I can't even remember now. It was so long ago. Gorham was on as well. You lose track of time. And Frank oh. Kelly was down last year, I think. And uh I remember the, the lads uh, instead of actually having an in-car camera um, the boy who sent in the cameraman holding the camera into the oak <laughs> and uh, I'd say he didn't know what he was in for but the, the oak was rattling and rattling I suppose he didn't have an actual in-car thing set up to put on the, the actual course screen around for, for people to see but I still gave him um, a great insight but uh, Robert Drugmans was down there last year it's another thing that fell by the way so it obviously was the, the Festival of Speed and it's been a very good event over the last couple of years Oh, it has. It has been brilliant, you know, and it's, it's after getting bigger and bigger every year. I think last year was the biggest year, you know, crowd-wise and stuff. And the weather has always been on their side as well, which luckily enough. And unfortunately, sure, this year COVID hit too, so that went by the wayside as well this year. And do you know, is there any kind of um, rumblings on the ground going into next year about what may, like it's very hard for more to to plan I suppose at the moment but is there a greater hope that we can see um, you know a decent bit of action next year or is it just kind of how long is a piece of string kind of thing at the moment I think at the moment it's all up in arms Kevin it's just how long is a piece of string at the minute which I suppose it's just to get things to settle down but my reckon and I'm not a doctor or anything but unfortunately I think it could be well into maybe the middle of next year now hopefully I'm wrong I don't want to be quoted on anything but you know it's just I suppose things will have to be cooled and maybe calmed down before anything is written in stone I suppose yeah well look all we can do is 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 hope for the best so yeah um Eilish I think that's about it um unless there's there's anything else you, you want to tell us before we, we wrap up no, I think we're good to go, Kevin. And thanks a million for having me on and the best of luck with everything. And I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. If I have, I apologise now. <laughs> no problem. Listen, a real pleasure to talk to you. I, I was supposed to interview you with uh, Casey Lord two years ago when you won the South East title. We never got around to it. So hopefully I'm forgiven now. And I really enjoyed the chat <laughs> there over the last uh, um, half an hour or so. No bothers, Kevin. And thanks a million. Thanks for everything. And the best of luck. <laughs>